Now we're going to take a look at how we can find the total numbers of outcomes um, from any set of independent events. Um, we're going to look at how we can do this with just two events, and we're going to look at how we can do this with three up to as many as we want events. We're going to take a look at how many possible events exist if you are going to use a dice, roll a dice, a six-sided die, um, and flip a coin. Um, and those are two, two events, um, but we're going to start out by making a probability table to represent this. So I'm going to show um, my die on this side, and I know my possible outcomes from rolling the die are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I know if I flip a coin, my possible outcomes are either heads or tails. So I can start to make this into our awesome probability table. Just give me a second to get that all in there. If I put, if I roll a one and I get a heads, that's one of my outcomes. And I can go through it. I'm going to just fill in this table really quickly. I've got one tails, two heads, two tails, three heads, three tails, four heads, four tails, five heads, five tails, six heads, six tails. And now it's pretty easy just taking a look at this. If my question was asking me to figure out how many possible outcomes there are, I can simply just count them off. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can see that I have 12 possible outcomes when I roll a die and I flip a coin. Now, I want you to look at this really quickly. If we want to start to find quicker ways to do this because we're going to get into situations where we're going to have a lot more possible outcomes than just 12. An easier way than just counting all these up, one, two, three, I could just look at I had six along this side and I had two along this side. And it's as simple as I can go six times two and that also gives me our 12 from before. So if I look at how many possible outcomes I have on my flip, which are two, and how many possible outcomes I have on my die, which is six. I can multiply those together and I get um, the number of all the possible outcomes in this situation. Now we're gonna take a look at something a little more complicated. Um, we're gonna look at something from three or more events. So we're gonna make up a crazy event here. And what I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna flip a coin. I'm gonna have a spinner that has three options and then I'm gonna have a four-sided die. And I could try to make a table with this, but you're gonna realize really quick that the tables only work for two outcomes because there's only uh, rows and columns and that's only two ways to do this. We need to actually use a tree here. So if I take a look at this, my coin, I know I can get a head or a tail from. I know from my three side spinner, I'm gonna call them A, B, and C. And that shows up for both the head and the tail situations. And then we're gonna have a little issue with some room here, but we're gonna try our best here. With a four-sided die, I can get one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we start to run into room making these kind of uh, trees, but we do our best with them. You can just imagine how complicated and big these can get if you're looking at a six-sided die multiple times. Um, you would very, very quickly run out of paper to do this kind of a question. So if I take a look at this, I can start to count these off and I can see exactly how many um, I had. I had one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I can keep going on and on and on and counting these off, but what I really want us to take a look at is right here, we had two options, two options for our heads or tails. Um, with our spinner, we had three options. And with our die, we had four options. And just like in the last situation, to save ourselves a little bit of time, if we just multiply these together, we will end up getting um, our exact result, uh, exactly what we're looking for if we're just looking for the total number of outcomes. I know two times three is six, times four is 24. So I can figure out right now that there are 24 possible outcomes to this event or these three events combined together. Now, we're gonna apply what we just learned. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at um, how many possible outcomes, so we're looking for possible outcomes again, that are formed when you draw a card from a deck, one card from a deck, roll a die, and then flip a coin. 
Um, and hopefully you know how many cards are in a deck. And we usually know that there are deck of cards. There's 52 cards in a deck, typically. There's depends if you count all those extra cards that sometimes come along. But we're going to go with 52 in this case. Um, we know a die, a typical die. If it doesn't tell you how many sides it has, just assume that it has six. And uh, we also know that a coin has two sides. All the coins I've encountered, at least. And we can start to, if you recall, multiply these together. And we will get all the total possible outcomes, possible results. Um, I'm just type this in my calculator. 52 times 6 times 2. This will actually give us 624 possible outcomes when you draw a card from a deck, then roll a die, and then flip a coin. And what you also notice is if you do this in any other order, you will still get the same number of total outcomes. Now we're going to look at uh, how many possible outcomes there are from rolling six dice, or and then we're going to look at how that compares to rolling ten dice. Um, this might be something you encounter in a board game, um, maybe a game like Yahtzee. I can't exactly recall how many go in Yahtzee, but um, we're going to figure this out. So we know that each dice has uh, six possible um, sides that could show up. You get one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to six. Um, and we're going to show this six times. So just like the last time, my first dice, my first roll could have six outcomes. My second could have six. My third could have six. My fourth could have six. My fifth could have six. And my sixth could also have six. And I can write this out and I can type this into my calculator, but what I'd like you to hopefully notice here is that we have six multiplied by itself a whole number of times. I can rewrite this, if you recall from earlier this year, as six to the exponent of six. And I can type this into my calculator also. You will get the exact same result. They are exactly the same. Um, I'm going to type that in for us right now. So I'm going to go six exponent six. And you're going to get 46,656 possible outcomes from just having six dice. That is a lot of outcomes. Let's compare this to what you would get if you had 10 dice. So I can sit here and I can write 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. And this is going to get a little bit old here, right? Um, especially if you start to get past a couple here. So I see I've already lost count of how many 6s I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And you can write this out. You can waste all your ink if you'd like. Or we can start to use our exponent shortcut. And we can write this as a 6 with an exponent of 10. And I can type this into my calculator. 6 exponent 10. You can also type this in as 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 10 times. You'll get the same result. Now this is a very, very large number. Okay, so I'm going to add the commas in to show our places. So if you roll only 10 dice, 10 dice, you have 60,466,176 possible outcomes from combining all those dice together. So you can see the more and more uh, events we add to our probability experiments, we start to get a much, much larger um, amount of possible outcomes.